Hello, welcome to Team Classic Suzuki's uh, headquarters here near sunny Silverstone. Come on in, see what we're all about. So this is us and we're a better place to start than with this beautiful little RGV 250. This is a 1991 model. Model designation is an XR91. This particular bike ridden by Martin Wimmer in that year. Uh, we're slowly building up a little bit of a collection of 250s here at Team Classic Suzuki. Um, and hopefully this bike here will be able to get out at a few events and hopefully see it again next year. So beside that, we have the very iconic 1989 Pepsi Suzuki ridden by the great man, Kevin Schwantz. Uh, again, this bike you probably recognise from Motorcycle Live, being restored there about three years ago. And we've used it a few times since then, but we try and keep it for real special occasions. Another bike in the collection, the number 10 bike here of Kenny Roberts Jr. Now this is the actual bike that Kenny rode in 1999 and he won three Grand Prix on this bike that year. Again, real brilliant bike to ride. And we try and get this one out and use this one as much as we can. Beside that, beautiful pair of Lucky Strike Suzuki's. First up, we've got the Kevin Schwantz 1994 bike, obviously Dawn in the number one plate that he rode with that year. Again, Kevin rides this bike pretty much at any event that he rides at in, the, in, in Europe these days. Uh, last win at Paul Ricard circuit a couple of years ago. Um, and beside that, another one that's nearing completion, 1997 Anthony Gobert bike. Again, bar the steel discs that we changed the carbons from to make it a bit more usable. Totally original bike, just waiting on a couple of little bits to be detailed on this. And again, hopefully getting this bike out next year. So next up, we've got the GSX-R1000 2016 bike. This is an ex-household BSB bike. Uh, we've now put it in our colours and made a few little changes to it. This is one of the bikes that we were hoping to run at the TT this year, but unfortunately, uh, things curtailed that plan. Uh, so with a bit of luck, fingers crossed, we'll be out in 2021 and we'll see this bike go around the island. Come and have a look and see what else we've got. So what called Suzuki TR500 there. We've got this good old GSX-I 1100 here. We've just got that in for a bit of loving up using Suzuki vintage parts. Um, just tucked in behind that, we've got the Dark Dog bike of Yukio Kagiyama. This is a 2008 World Superbike. Brilliant bit of kit. And beside that, we've got our good old trusted XR69 replicas. Now, this is one of the bikes that we've run at the Classic TT for the last sort of five or six years. Um, this is undergoing a bit of a sort of winter restoration. Hopefully we'll uh, get out on her again next year. So every team needs to have a good sponsor and we're lucky enough to have Motel on board. They supply us all of our fluids and we're very proud to uh, run them in all of our bikes. Another bike we're very proud of is this 1996 GSX-R 750S Rad. Now this bike was actually the official Suzuki Japan entry to the Suzuka 8 hour race, probably the most prestigious race in the world. And this bike competed in that in 1996. Just undergoing a light restoration here and again, hopefully be able to use this bike a little bit more next year few more over here that we've got for your pleasure. So we've got some various bikes here awaiting uh, restoration in various stages. We've got a 1995 RGV 500. We've got a 2001 Kenny bike. Now this one's not a million miles off. And again, hopefully we'll get this bike out sometime next year. Beside that, 2019 GSX-R1000. Now this is actually one of the X-Build base bikes. This was ridden by um, Richard Cooper, 2019 at the Northwest 200, where he finished second being fastest newcomer. Now we've got this painted up in our team colors now and with Joe Ackroyd on board, we were hoping to have a run out of the TT this year. Uh, again, hopefully we'll be able to give Joe a run out next year. Beside that, Pepsi Suzuki. Beside that, Frankie Killy's GSX-R 750S Rad from 2000. Now, a very special bike this. This was the, one of the last years of the GSX-R 750 before they moved over to 1000cc at World Superbike. The Suzuki had really got the bike sorted at this stage. It's a very, very special bike and a beautiful bike to ride. Beside that, again, another iconic Suzuki, the Tyco bike of Guy Martin, 2012 bike. Uh, so obviously raced around the TT with Guy. And then over here, we've got a very special RGV 500 to show you. So this one's nearing completion now. This is a 1987 RGV 500. The model designation is XR72. So team riders for 1987 were Kenny Irons rode the whole season for Suzuki with Kevin Schwantz making his debut for Suzuki on the V4 in the second half of the season. Now come around here and I'll show you a few more details of this bike. Now the biggest advantage of this bike over the, pre over the previous bike was the V4 engine. 
The previous Suzuki's were square four configuration, so basically it had all four cylinders sitting up here with the carburetors at the side of the bike. Now this bike went to the V formation, so what you've got is cylinders one and two are pointing down here, and cylinders three and four are pointing up the back here. Now this gives a real good configuration with the carburetors sitting in the middle here. Now Suzuki made a massive, massive use of magnesium in the construction of this bike, crankcases, clutch baskets, uh, carburetors, everything was magnesium. Exhaust pipes here, you see a crossing over underneath here to try and get the desired length. One of the traits of this bike was the twin pipes out of the side. Suzuki in the second half of 1988 went over to the two pipes out the side, which they continued to run right up until 2001. Another feature of this bike is the conventional forks. Suzuki in the, again, the second half of 1988 went over to upside down forks and also used the carbon brakes for the first time. This bike here is still running the steel brakes with the AP system here. Moving on, something a little bit more modern. We've got a 1996 GSX-R750. Now this is the bike that we're currently building and this is a bike that will be going around the Classic TT next year with hopefully Michael Dunlop on board to continue our success. Now this started off as a factory bike and we've done a huge amount of improvements on it and that hopefully rules the land, this will become our Classic TT bike for next year. The bike started off with an original chassis which has been strengthened and braced and again the engine cases, cylinders, cylinder head etc etc are all original Suzuki parts. The factory made the original uh, magnesium covers so we've got a lightweight generator down there, a dry clutch, close ratio gearbox, titanium com rods and a host of other good little engine parts. Up front here we've got the KTEC 25mm DDS cartridge kit and at the back here to suit we've got the uh, KTEC DDS rear shock. Okay, pop around here, I'll show you a few details of the bike. So if we look here, you can see this is an original Suzuki factory dry clutch assembly that, this, that they raced with at World Superbike. Again, lightweight cover here, does away with the starter motor and all of the starter gears. We've re-engineered a lot of these parts, as I explained, for the TT, because the, the rigors of the TT means we can't run magnesium parts, it's just not safe. So we've remanufactured the top and lower triple clamps ourselves. We've also remade the fork feet, so these run a modern tube, a modern slider, with our own feet, which has got a real sort of period look for it. We've made our own radiators for the bike, we've manufactured our own bodywork, our own air intakes, we've even copied the factory footrests here as well. So it's a, real, it's a real big effort to try and get one of these safely going around the Classic TT. Okay, so that's our GSX R750. Over here, something just a little bit different, this one. This is, the, uh, this is a bit of a project of ours. This is going to be a bit of a take on the Katana for ourselves that we're doing. So this bike, the engine started off as a World Superbike. It's a 2008 model. Chassis also, this was a World Superbike chassis from 2008. Now we've put in it some tri triple clamps. Obviously a nice front end here. Kept the Dimag CH3 wheels because it gives it a real classic look with some dish discs, again, aiding that classic look to the bike. Now the big thing we've done with this bike is we've, we've drunk the original monoshock system and we've custom made a swing arm for it, which we're going to be running twin shocks. Obviously a bit of work in progress at the moment, but the whole essence of this is we wanted to keep original Suzuki body kit on the bike. So to that end, we got a new old stock seat unit, new old stock nose cone from Suzuki Vintage Parts Scheme. And we started reshaping those, cutting them in, making them fit the GSXR lines and hopefully we'll create something pretty special. So. Building all of these bikes means that we need a load of Suzuki spares. Now, obviously we've got great links with the Suzuki Vintage Parts Scheme and we manufacture a lot of our own parts. Come and have a little look, I'll show you what we've got. So this triple clamp being one of the parts that I mentioned earlier, this is an exact copy of the original magnesium part. Difference being we now manufacture it in 7075 aluminium with this covering that makes it look like magnesium. The advantage of this, TT, I will not trust 20 year old magnesium to go around the circuit. With this, it's a brand new part, made to look like the original. I've got total faith in this. Okay, so moving over here, we've got some XR69 parts, a couple of sets of the Yoshimura carbs there that we run. We've got a rocker here. Again, this is a part that we designed, we drew, and it's manufactured by a local engineering company. Do a brilliant job, and we've run them for a few years at the TT. Uh, we've got the obligatory race fit exhaust. Now we've run these on all of our XR69 replicas. Very nice bit of kit. For the money, you won't go far wrong with them. A uh, number of other bits we've manufactured, everything from uh, chain adjusters through to swing arm axles. Um, pretty much you name it for that bike, and we've manufactured it. I'll show you some RGV parts. Okay, so RGV spares. We've got a number of spares around here, ranging everything from, we've got some brand new carbon discs there from 1997. Um, 
bodywork, clutches, sprockets. We've got some triple clamps here. Again, 1998 triple clamps there. Beautiful bits of kit. The special bits of the RGV 500s, carburettors. These particular magnesium carburettors were run on Suzuki's from the 1998 season onwards. Prior to that, it was a green magnesium Mikuni carburettors, these being the 36mm KEs. If you find a set of these lying around in your garage, be sure to throw them my way. Right, a few more spares around here. We've got everything ranging from GSXR 1000 crankcases. We have some GSXR 1000 chassis, RGV 500 swing arms. Got pretty much everything ranging from beautiful exhaust pipe here. This particular one being a Yoshima exhaust. Twin outlets here. This was run on the 2008 GSXR 1000. Again, full world superbike part, brand new. We'll get around to using it one day. So as well as the restorations, and the building of our own bikes. We also build all our own engines here. So come and see where this happens. So, welcome to the engine room. We'll start off with this. This is a 1989 oil-cooled GSX-R750 engine. Pretty special one, this. Um, this is a Cert Suzuki bike. So this engine actually completed in the 24 hours of Le Mans, 1989. So this is a bike we're currently restoring. And again, hopefully we'll have this up and running in the next year or so. Moving over here. We've got an abundance of GSX-R1000 pieces here. This is a X-World Superbike engine, again, just undergoing restoration. Over this side, GSX-R750. Titanium com rods, um, lightweight pistons, close ratio gearbox and a dry clutch. This is a bit of a test engine for the 750 project that we're, we're currently doing. And again, here's something you don't see every day. This is RGV500. This is a 2001 model. Now you can tell this being unique, in that they dished this rear gear here and they offset the cylinder slightly. This was to try and improve airflow. Basic layout of this engine, twin crankshafts. These cylinders here would be pointed down at this direction when it's installed in the bike. These cylinders up here and the carburetor's bolted on here in the middle. Cassette gearbox, little oil pump, plastic oil pump gear there. About 192 horsepower. Total bike was weighing about 130 kilos. Talking of which, I'd better get it built, so get the hell out of here. 